Welcome to Evangelistic Outreach Ministries. The fields are white, all ready to harvest. Oh, For over half a century, the Evangelistic Outreach team has traveled across the street, about the nation, and around the world with the gospel message. We're dedicated to the vision of our late founder, Dr. Calvin Evans, to reach the unreached for Jesus Christ. May the love of Christ touch you, and may His Word teach you, today on Evangelistic Outreach. Well, this week we'll be traveling to Moorhead, Kentucky for Winterfest. This is always a great week, and we'll be with our dear friends, Mike Blanton and Evans, the Lord family, Garrett and Kaylee Fitch, and what a week it's going to be. And so we ask that you would uh, join us this week in Moorhead, Kentucky, as well as pray for us if you're unable to attend. Service time is 7 p.m. each night, Monday through Friday, and we hope that you'll join us in worship there in that Moorhead, Kentucky area. It's a wonderful facility. We'll tell you more about that in just a little bit, but would you join us in prayer today? Heavenly Father, we thank you today for the many friends that have chosen to take the time to worship with us on the broadcast today. Uh, we know there are many that are unable to get out physically, and this is the, the church they receive each week. And so we pray a special blessing upon them. Most of all, we, we pray for the Winter Fest that will be going on in Moorhead, Kentucky this week. Lord, we pray for your anointing. We pray for a special touch. Pray for safety and travel. Most of all, we pray for souls to be one to the kingdom of God. Bless this program, we pray. Bless Winterfest this week. And for it all, we'll praise you and thank you for who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. dark cave of trouble, a soul was in distress, evil whispered in my ear, you've been left for dead, in the trial of my life, all I could do was sigh, but then suddenly God breathed in me, a second win to try, now I live to tell about this. I shall live and 
Well, we've been mentioning Winterfest and we wanted to give you some details. First of all, it's going on this week, Monday through Friday night. Service time is 7 p.m. We'll be joined by uh, Calvin Ray Evans, of course, preaching on Monday and Thursday. I'll be preaching on Tuesday. Also, Mike Blanton will be preaching. Garrett Fitch will be preaching. The Lord family will be singing. Garrett Fitch and Kaylee Fitch singing. Mike Blanton and Evan is singing as well throughout the week. It's a, just a tremendous week, and we know that you'll be blessed to attend and worship with us. It's at the Moorhead Conference Center, Moorhead Convention Center, at 111 East 1st Street in Moorhead, Kentucky. Very easy to find, a beautiful facility, a state-of-the-art facility, plenty of free parking, plenty of comfortable seating available as well. So join us this week at Winterfest down in Moorhead, Kentucky, all week long through Friday evening. If you need more information or directions, you can visit our website or you can always call our toll-free office at one 800 767 8713. And then when you're calling, make sure and request this month's free gift offer on Make Some Noise. It's from last year's camp meeting in Sefton, Florida that we've been sharing with you on the broadcast. Uh, two messages, one from myself entitled Stay Ready and one from Calvin Ray Evans, a classic message on noisemakers. Uh, these are available on a DVD or audio CD or you can uh, go to our YouTube channel and watch it um, on demand on our YouTube channel at Evangelistic Outreach Ministries. Again, everything is free of charge. You just need to contact our ministry office. You can, you can go to our calvinevans.org to order it. You can call us toll free or you can write to us and request it at 299 Ohio Avenue, New Boston, Ohio 45662. Again, it's been such a joy to share with you the services from the camp meeting in Sefton, Florida. We're going to go to that again today and we pray it will be a blessing to you and and again, join us this week in Winterfest at Moorhead, Kentucky. May God bless you. Matthew 25, if you have it, say amen. amen. Beginning in verse 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps and the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and for you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with them to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. See, he was just a groom. But now when they're in trouble, he's Lord. If they would just been Lord at the beginning, might not have been in any trouble. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. No coincidence, they sang a couple of songs about the second coming of Christ. And no coincidence at all that God has laid all this message on my heart tonight. And, and I, I struggle because, we, you know, we all want to have something in our heart that we, we would like to preach. But God said, no, this is, this is what we need to share tonight. I've been studying on the parables uh, of Christ and, and have shared a message or two from it. And this is one of those. And Christ, uh, when he was dealing with his disciples... Uh, I, I just sometimes I just try to imagine how frustrated he would have been uh, because of their lack of comprehension. He they, they would ask questions, and he would tell them the answer, and it would you could tell it just wasn't going through. It just wasn't you know. It's like talking to your teenagers. If you have teenagers, you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes you talk to them, it's like you're talking to a wall. They just don't understand. And so the, uh, and in, in fact, this lack of comprehension got in the way of their service to the kingdom. 
And, and not only their, their lack of comprehension, but their lack of, of, of belief. I, I really feel that there were times when they simply did not believe Jesus was who he said he was. And that got in the way of their service to him. This, these two chapters, Matthew chapter 24 and 25, are actually a very long answer to a short question. That short question is actually found in Matthew 24, verse 3. Let me read it to you. The disciples asking him privately saying, Tell us when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? And I guess if I, if I struggle with studying the word of God, this may be one of those times because, you know, I, I, I'm kind of a black and white kind of guy. I, I just want the answer. And Jesus takes two chapters to explain this short question, when are you coming back? He takes two chapters. So obviously, Jeff, that means to us, and to, no, I'm not pointing you out, but specifically, but, but there's obviously something more that he's trying to teach us. Because everything in the word of God is there for a specific reason, is it not? And so he, he could have left all of Matthew 24 and 25 out, but they didn't. They included it there. But he actually did give us the answer in, in Matthew 24 when he said in verse 36, But at that day and the hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. And you'll find at the, end of our, at the end of our text verse, he says, Watch ye therefore, for you know neither today nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Couldn't he just have said that in Matthew chapter 24, verse 4? But he didn't. He took two chapters to explain this answer. I ain't telling you. Now, I don't mean to mess with anybody's theology tonight, so please do not get me wrong. But Jesus specifically said, here's the answer. No one knows. The angels in heaven don't even know. That means I'm not going to tell you when I'm coming back, but I will tell you how to live until I do come back. And the message is simple. Stay ready. Stay ready. Amen. Stay ready. That's the message. So he's trying to educate us. He's trying to teach us something in, this, in these, in these, in these uh, ver verses that I read to you. And, and this text that I read to you, even though it is a parable, and even though he is talking about the kingdom of heaven, this would have actually happened in Bible times. This is actually the third phase of a Jewish marriage ceremony. The first two phases have already happened. There's been an engagement, and young people... Uh, and I hope you better be thanking God that marriage in America is not like marriage in Bible times because the parents picked the spouse out without you even knowing it. Maybe we actually should go back to that. So they would pick it and they would get engaged and the engagement was as binding as the marriage. Boy, don't you wish you'd go back to that. And then the bridegroom would go away he would prepare a place. Yeah. Yeah. And then at an hour when they did not know, but they knew he was coming, he would come back, he would meet the bride, and they would have the third part, which is where we're at today. They would have this week-long marriage feast. They would have a party as they would celebrate this marriage. So three things we understand from reading these scriptures before we get into the, the heart of the message. Number one is that the bridegroom is coming. This is where theology can maybe, and I'm not going to debate anybody after service, so please don't even try to debate me. I'm not going to. But can we all agree Jesus is coming? <laughs> He's coming back. Amen. He's coming back. Not only, number one, is he coming back, but secondly, we don't know when he's coming back. And there's a reason why he specifically did not give a date or a time. Because if he did, then that means everybody would live the way they would want to live until 1159. So we know he's coming. We don't know when he is coming. And third, there's a chance he could come in the dark. Now you say, Brian, why would you say that? Because they had lamps. So that tells us 
probably, more than likely, even though we don't know the date nor the hour, Jesus is coming back in darkness. I'm not talking about physical darkness. I'm talking about spiritual darkness. Two things you watch, and I'm not, a, I'm not a theologian of the second coming. Pastor Calvin Ray, as he studied that for years. But, but I will, I will, he's taught me this. Two things you watch. You watch the nation of Israel, and you watch the church. We know the seasons. And if it's ever been spiritually more, if it's been more spiritually dark in the history of our world, I don't know when that was or when that has been. We are in a spiritually dark condition. But you know what that means? The bridegroom's coming. He's coming. He's closer today than he was yesterday. Let me tell you some things about these wise and foolish virgins that we can apply to us. Number one, I want you to notice the preparation. The preparation. They were commanded that they, it was implied in this passage of Scripture that they needed to prepare for the bridegroom coming. Preparation is simply this, using your now to get ready for your next. Using now to get ready for your next. You wonder why a lot of people in churches struggle today? It's because they don't have a next. You say, what's the next? That means you don't have a hope. That means you don't have goals. That means you're not preparing for your future. You say, Brian, why should I prepare if Jesus Christ could come today? Because he tells us we need to prepare. The, 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 uh, the, the doctrine of preparation should be preached and taught in our churches. My friend, tonight, if we ever lack anything in the house of God today, it's the lack of preparation. Preparation. People don't get prepared to come to the house of God. They don't get prepared to worship. You got to pump them. You got to prime them. You got to sing. You got to sing the courses. You got to sing the hymns. And you got to get them ready. And hopefully by the end of the service, hopefully by the time the preacher gets up, they're ready to go to church. But my friend, if we would realize church doesn't begin when you get in the house of God, church begins in your heart when you prepare your heart for worship. You know how our dear friends the McCoy family have been able to make it through this last few weeks? It's because they have an ex. They have a hope. They have a future to look to. Their hope is in the fact that Jesus Christ is coming back and they're going to be reunited with their family that so tragically passed away. You know how Hoy has been able to make it. You know how their family has been able to make it. You know how Susie has been able to make it because they have prepared a long time ago and they have a hope that things are going to get better. My friend, if you don't have a next, if you don't have a hope, you will die in your spiritual condition. You got to prepare. You got to prepare. If you want people to stay out of your business, pray that they have a next. Because <laughs> if they have a next, they ain't got time to mess with you. <laughs> well, uh, I, I realize tonight is an uh, important game for some of y'all. I hate dogs, and I don't even know what a horned frog is, so I really don't care. But you're going to find out at the end of tonight, possibly tomorrow morning, who was prepared? Some of you maybe have children that are involved in sports, and there's nothing worse than seeing a team that get the, the, and possibly your team when they get on a court or a field and they're not prepared. It te- you can tell right away if a team or a person is prepared or not. <laughs> Preacher, I don't care how good you think you are, you need to be prepared. One thing I learned when I started preaching in 1994, I was taught, I was raised in a preacher's home, and Pastor Cal has taught me and his dad taught me this, never leave the house without being prepared. Always have something in your back pocket. Never get to the house of God without a sermon. Young ministers and young preachers, if I have any advice to give to you, I may not be able to one to give it, but if I have any advice to give you, some of you say, well, I'm not getting a lot of calls. I'm not getting a lot of appointments to go out and preach. Well, are you prepared? Don't wait until you get a call from a church and then get a message. Get a message ready. Have it ready. God knows if you're ready. And if you're prepared, the appointments will come. Somebody say amen. I'm busy preaching. 
Singers, I don't care how good you think you are, and you may be better than some of the greatest Southern gospel artists that travel this nation. You still got to prepare. Sunday school teachers, I don't care if you can quote Rev Genesis or Revelation, you still need to be prepared. Somebody help me preach this is good preaching. You need to be prepared. You say, why do you need to be prepared? Because if you prepare yourself, if, if you familiarize yourself, if you're, if you're studying the word of God, then my friend, when you get up and when you do what God has called you to do, you will do it without even thinking about it because you're prepared. Amen. One of the greatest basketball players that ever lived, his name is Pistol Pete Maravich. And if you ever watch a documentary of his life, you'll understand that when he was 12 years old, he would take a basketball with him. He would, he would, he would uh, have it in the bed with him. He would dribble. He would shoot in the bed. He would dribble everywhere he would go. He was one of the greatest basketball players to ever live. They said it was almost like the basketball was part of his hand. You know why? Because he did it so much. He was prepared so much that when he got on the court, he wasn't even thinking about it because he was used to doing it. It was a part of his life. What I'm trying to tell you is when we get into the house of God, if you're prepared, you won't even have to think about it. Why? Because you, you have it in your memory. You have it in your mind. You have it in your spirit. When you come prepared, my friend, I'm telling you, can you imagine if we come into the house of God and everyone is prepared for worship, you would see a major turnaround in your church. If you're prepared. We have a young man in our church that he's quite the distance runner, but when he started out, he was in junior high, he would, he would struggle, but he kept running and he kept preparing. Now he's a junior in high school. He's going to be one of the top runners in our state and definitely in our school. But you know why? Because in 2022, he ran from Portsmouth to Tampa, Florida. He ran over, a th he ran 1,005 miles in 2022. So 3.15 miles is nothing to him. A mile around a track ain't nothing to him. Why? Because he's ran over a thousand. What I'm trying to tell you is, folks, if we just learn to prepare. Oh, my, if we learn, if you want to give your preacher a heart attack, why don't you come to church prepared? Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yes, These women, they needed to be prepared. Five of them were, five of them weren't. And that brings us to our next point, the expectation. Verse 3 says, they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. Notice it says they took no oil with them. What does this mean to us? They knew he was coming, but they expected him to come when they thought he was going to come. They expected the bridegroom to show up on their schedule. Folks, we are in dangerous territory when we put God on our schedule. Amen. God will do what he wants to do when he wants to do it in his way, in his time, for his glory. And we would be so much better off and we would have much better sleep at night when we would just simply give our schedule to him, when we would give our healing to him, when we would give our miracle to him and say, Lord, I don't know it all, but you know it all. You are all powerful. You, are, you know what I need and you know what I don't need. Lord, if it be your will, do this for me, but do it in your way, in your time. Folks, I'm telling you, you'd be better off if you don't put God in a box. Don't put him on a schedule because my friend, he will come, but he won't, he won't come when you think he's going to. It's dangerous when everybody, anybody, would put a time frame on God doing something for you. I know I'm in, I'm in territory here because I am one, but don't listen to televangelists. <laughs> that will tell you that if you do this or that, then in a certain amount of time it's going to come back to you. That's dangerous. That's dangerous. It's filling somebody's pockets and it's definitely not yours. They'll, they'll say, well, if you send me $70, then, then over the next seven weeks, then God will return it sevenfold to you. I got one better for you. How about you tithe to your church? And God's principle is simply this. Will I not open the windows of heaven? 
and pour you out a blessing which you cannot contain. I believe, I believe Luke also tells us that he will return it to us, pressed down, shaken together, running over, just mind the word of God. Do what he says and God will bless you. We thank you again for joining us on the program today. Just as a reminder, be sure to join us at Winterfest this week. We're looking forward to the great meeting there at Moorhead, Kentucky. We appreciate Mount Pisgah Church and all of the churches that come together for the meeting. And we really, really hope that you'll do your best to join us there at 7 o'clock at the convention center there at Moorhead, Kentucky at Winterfest. Thank you for praying for us. Be sure to let your friends and loved ones know about Evangelism outreach the time that it airs in your station encourage them to join us next week at this same time over the same station Thank you for joining us today on Evangelistic Outreach Ministries. The fields are white, all ready to harvest. For more information about this ministry, contact us at Evangelistic Outreach Ministries, 299 Ohio Avenue, New Boston, Ohio, 45662, or toll free at 800-767-8713. You can also visit us online at calvinevans.org. Let's